Hello and welcome to the live streamer backstage podcast. I'm Alec Johnson and this is a weekly show where I interview fellow live streamers to understand how they are using live streaming as a tool in their business and to discover the tech, the gear and the software that they use to produce great live shows. My guest today is Robert Hathcock aka the Las Vegas legend that is DJ ROB. Rob is a highly acclaimed DJ and through his company Right On Beat Productions, Rob has been involved in the Las Vegas nightclub and music industry for over 30 years. Rob owns a recording studio and production company and has produced original music and remixes for various artists on major record labels, earning him gold and platinum recording awards. There's a whole conversation we can have around transferring his audio and DJing and showmanship skills over to live streaming. But actually, I've asked him on the show today to also talk about his interior design skills because Rob has designed some phenomenal live streaming sets in his recording and virtual studio and video studio consultancy clients services. If you are in the Ecamm community on Facebook, you may well have seen videos he's posted of some of these studio builds and they look more like TV studios than your average live streamer setup. Speaking as an engineer, a designer and an architect, I really appreciate the attention to detail that Rob has shown both aesthetically but also technically in the in the implementation of these designs. They're quite simply on another level. As always, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So without further ado, let's welcome DJ Right On Beat. Hey, Rob, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Ooh, thanks. Thanks for the great intro and thanks for having me. Uh, I'm glad to be on your show. You what you're doing and everybody in the community knows what you're doing is top level. So shout out to you. I'm, I'm jealous and envious of, of your organization and, and how you do everything and how you plan everything. I'm, I call you the man with the plan. I, I literally <laughs> do. That should be your little sub phrase, Alec Johnson, the man with the plan, because you, you're great at planning things and organizing things. And I see all the things that you're doing in the background and that's the thing I'm lacking. So I'm probably going to be getting some consulting from you. Hopefully some people need consulting from me, but from you, that organization, that level of planning that you do is something that I lack and hopefully we'll get together on that and you'll help me with that. Yeah, oh, thanks so much. Well, we can exchange ideas because like I say, I've just been uh, blown away, frankly, by the uh, the designs that you've produced. And that's, as I say, speaking as a designer, <laughs> you've done an awesome job with some of these things. So I definitely want to get into that a little bit later on as well. Uh, perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about yourself, your background and sort of how you got into live streaming as well. Yeah, well, it was it was music first, uh, grade school, high school, being a drummer, being a musician and got into the keyboards and, of course, getting into bands and stuff like that. And then naturally progression into a DJ. Uh, DJs that were prior musicians uh, have that one step above because they already understand musicality and phrasing and, and what works and what people like. So that progression when I was a teenager being a, a DJ here in Las Vegas and funny enough, I was a teenager, 17, 18, 19 years old, and I was working in adult clubs where you weren't supposed to be, you know, you had to be of age. But I had a dynamic skill set of DJing that nobody else had in town, and I got kind of famous for that. And so DJing in all the hottest nightclubs, been doing that for 40 years, believe it or not, and I'm celebrating you know, the 40-year anniversary of actually DJing professionally here in Las Vegas, um, which led to the natural progression of being a music producer as a DJ you know what songs work, what gets people to the dance floor. So then you start analyzing the song and say, oh, what is that keyboard you're using? What is that drum thing? And then you start investing in that. And so I got into the producing thing and working with major labels and artists and doing remixes and additional production. And then all these things are natural progressions. The natural progression from being an audio editor, programmer, production guy here in Vegas uh, got me into video. And it makes sense from a, a music producer standpoint, you have to have a, a beginning, a middle, and end. You have to have a verse, chorus, you know, outro, all that. And it came naturally when I did start tinkering with video that, oh, the transitions got to be, they got to make sense. You know, if I'm going from this shot to this shot, it needs to, you know, smoothly move in. And that's how audio works. And that's how music producing works. So it was a natural progression, but that's the, the short and quick story of that progression and how I got into video. Mm -hmm. And when was the uh, sort of, foray into actual live streaming as opposed to just video when did you sort of make that uh, take that sort of jump into that side of things it kind of happened because the clients and the companies that i work for in vegas so 
when I do the music production, I'm doing it for agencies. Shows come to town because it's a big conference town. Shows come to town, and I do a lot of this music production for choreographers and production shows where uh, Google will come on stage or uh, Remax Realty, whoever, big companies come on stage, and they need all this audio production to go with this big show that they're doing for all the people that are coming in town to watch the show and visit the conference, do the breakout rooms. And all of a sudden, you know, COVID hit. And these clients still wanted to do these shows virtually. And the, the clients or my agencies that I work with say, hey, Rob, do you know anybody who can do video? And I said, I need to start getting into the video. So I started getting the cameras and stuff. And I, the first thing I did for this agency was uh, a school wanted to do a live stream of the graduation. This was right when COVID hit. And they wanted to do a live stream of the graduation because they didn't want to do an in-person graduation. So they said, can you do this? And this was just iPhones. I set up three iPhones. It didn't have Ecamm yet using OBS, which was a nightmare in itself. <laughs> but doing the three camera angles with the iPhones and feeding in music. And they, the other thing they wanted was they wanted the people to come into the big parking lot because it was a big school. They wanted the people to come into the parking lot and watch and hear the graduation. So I set up an FM transmitter and had a sign when they come in the parking lot, turn into 88.3 and hear the, the, the commencement speeches and everything else on your radio. So everybody was in their cars listening to it. We had the screen on the thing and it was live streaming to Facebook. It was challenging, but it was great that I jumped in like that and did that. Then it became fundraisers for restaurants and then the conferences. And I had to just, I had to get deeper in the video and I had to build a test kitchen because I didn't want to go on location and have three cameras is it going to work with this dock? Is it going to work with the laptop? Mm -hmm. Am I going to stream? Am I going to get Ethernet at this at this venue? And just a learning process, but it, it it got in demand partly because of COVID. I was tinkering with video before that, but deeper when that happened. And a lot of people that happened with a lot of people they they got into video because of that. Uh huh. Hey, it's funny you mentioned OBS. I think we've uh, most people go through that rite of passage before they get to Ecamm uh, and then realize there's a like a better way to do it on the other on the other side after OBS. But I went I went through all the uh, the usual OBS headaches myself as well. Uh, and when did you sort of switch then over to Ecamm? When did you find out about uh, Ecamm? And how, how did you find out about Ecamm? Probably Facebook or something because I was getting frustrated with OBS. And I'm, I'm a Mac guy since 85, 86. I, the first computer I had was a SE30 in 85 or 86. So I know Mac, I know code and programming. I know that OBS was built basically on a PC platform mm -hmm. and it was for PC and somebody just ports that code over for Mac, but it's secondary. It's like, it doesn't work as good. It's, it's clunky. They, they, it's too deep for what you need. And you gotta be a rocket scientist kind of. And I was browsing on Facebook and somebody said, man, you can do the overlays and you can do the multiple cameras and you can tap the titles in and do the stuff. And that was what, a year and a half, two years ago, I jumped into that and it's been a blessing. I just want to take a moment to talk about Ecamm Live. This is the live production Mac software that we're using to live stream and record this podcast. In my opinion, it is the best live streaming and recording software on the market today. So what exactly does it do? Well, essentially, it allows you to control the content that you're including in your video, be it a live stream or a recorded video. And you do this by building out different scenes that contain the content that you want to show. This content may be a feed from your camera or indeed multiple cameras, or you may be sharing a screen, which is what I do a lot of in my tutorial style videos that I make for my Take One Tech YouTube channel. You can share the screen from a second computer or maybe even a gaming console if you are a live streaming gamer. And just as we are doing in this podcast, you can also bring in guests using Ecamm Live's built-in interview mode where guests can join from a browser and you can then incorporate their video and audio into your production. Finally, you can add all kinds of additional graphical and animated overlay elements and even movies to really add a level of branded professionalism that would be hard to achieve in any other way. The real magic happens though, when you hit that record or go live button, because then you are able to seamlessly switch back and forth between all of the scenes that you've created. And indeed, this is how all of the videos have been created for my Take One Tech YouTube channel. And the reason it's called Take One Tech, by the way, is because all of the videos are made in one take with no edits. I just hit record, make the video, and as soon as I hit the end recording button, the file is there and ready to be uploaded straight to YouTube. What I love about Ecamm is not 
not just the ease of use that it has when compared to other live streaming software, but also the greater flexibility it gives in terms of layouts and designs that you can create for your shows when compared to some of the hardware streaming solutions. And one thing that makes Ecamm great specifically for podcasts is the fact that it has the ability to record isolated audio tracks. So once we finish recording this podcast, I'll have a separate audio file for me, my guests, and any other audio tracks that have been a part of the recording. That makes the editing and repurposing of the content for the podcast so much more streamlined. It does have another little trick up its sleeve though, and that is its virtual camera feature. This allows you to take the video output from Ecamm live straight into communication apps like Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Discord, and so on. This means that rather than just appearing in Zoom meetings with a regular camera feed, you can now show up with all of the amazing production values that Ecamm Live gives you and deliver that straight into your Zoom meeting. And trust me, when you rock up to a Zoom meeting with Ecamm, <laughs> the other participants will be truly amazed. So whether for live streaming, recorded video content, or to level up your Zoom game, I highly recommend you give Ecamm Live a go. You can get a free trial by going to takeonetech.io slash Ecamm. That's E C A double M, takeonetech.io slash Ecamm. And of course, you can find a link to that in the show notes as well. You will certainly not regret giving it a go. Now let's get back to the show. Um, and so the, uh, the, the, the studios that you've been building for other people, how did you get into that side of things where, you know, is this, and you, I know that you do, um, sort of recording studios and, and, you know, video studios as well. Is that something that you were doing before you got into live streaming, you know, building out recording studios for people as well? Is that a service that you've been offering for a while or was it the other way around sort of coming from the live streaming side? No, it was definitely doing the recording studios. I had built two recording studios for myself in commercial places here in Las Vegas. One was mm -hmm. like a warehouse area where there was like a big, you know, car repair place. And that's when I had to learn about sound isolation and, and sound absorption and because this area was noisy. But I built a commercial studio there for myself. Then I moved that to a, a more prestigious office building type of setup where it was nice and quiet and nicer for the clients to come into. And that led to me building studios for other people. I was kind of known in this town for the recording stuff and other people needed that expertise. And so I started building some recording studios for other people, whether it was a bedroom studio or a commercial building, I was doing that. Same thing happened with the doing the video stuff. Um, people said, you know, can you do this simple little setup in this restaurant for our, our Friday night thing? I did a thing in Arizona for a restaurant in the, like I said, with the three camera thing, and I made them a permanent thing and some bedroom stuff here in Vegas. And then that last project that I posted about, uh, was, you know, a multimillionaire with a mansion style home, it had a huge, what I would say canvas. It was like a 20 foot wide by 30 foot long master bedroom. Um, beautiful space to work with. Uh, also, uh, it was very hard because it was marble flooring. It was soffited high ceilings, glass patio doors on two of the walls, solid tall walls on the other two walls. So my first focus was getting some sound dampening happening, getting some acoustic panel, acoustic clouds, which sit on the ceiling because, man, and I sent you a clap test, which I do on some of my studio builds. First thing I want to do is I want to clap, hear all that reverb splash, and then at the end of the project, do that same clap test and it's it's night and day. And coming from an audio background, I think that's a priority. And I did that first. Then of course, the aesthetics, the look, the design, and um, it came out great. And then from that, I'm doing other stuff. And that actual client has an adjacent room now that they want me to build a recording studio. So mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year, we're going to build a recording studio that will feed into that studio, vice versa, uh, back and forth. And they want to do some like, recording stuff or they want to start like a record label but um it just leads to bigger and better things you know mm -hmm. uh, for those that are listening on the audio i've uh, just pulled up a picture of uh, this studio that uh, rob's just talking about on the screen so you may this may be one you want to come and check out the video if you're just listening on audio but this was the one the first one of your uh, designs that i saw that just blew me away and there's a few things that i'd like to just sort of highlight in this First of all is just the general look of it. I mean, it looks so luxurious and uh, amazing. But the other thing about it is it looks, it's like the whole room. You haven't just got, um, you know, the particular area that's going to be in shot. The whole room just looks like it's a space that would be just really nice to be in in any case, where, whether you're in front of the camera, behind the camera, uh, and, and so on. The other thing, though, is the way that you've mounted everything and you've got all the lights, all of the cameras, everything is hung down from the ceiling. 
Uh, and, you know, I think most live streamers with studios, they've got cables running all over the place and <laughs> various different things. I try to keep it as tidy as possible, but there's still, you know, a few trailing things here and there. I've got the lights that are lighting the wall behind me that if I move out of the way, they're just on a like a little stand. So it was the fact that you'd put that much care and attention into making this actually a really usable space because people want to be able to uh, presumably just come in and sit down and do their show without having to worry about uh, certainly tripping over stuff, but without stuff being in the way. And that was the thing that really struck me about this was that level of care and attention and, you know, the little boxes to root audio, at, you know, headphones underneath the table. And it's just immaculate in like inside and out. So uh, perhaps you can talk a little bit more about the, you know, the way that you've done that. How, how have you sort of suspended all the things and some of your thought process that you put into that? Oh, well, thanks for recognizing that. And if you guys didn't know, Alec was a previous architect. So coming from him, that's a huge compliment. And yeah, I really dug deep on this one. I, I did some studying and I seen some, you know, everything from what a bedroom studio has to what these big TV studios have. And the first thing I wanted to do, because this family has kids and they have these giant black German shepherds and I didn't want to have any tripods. I knew it was going to be a multi-camera, four-camera setup and I didn't want tripods and C-SANs. So the one of the first things I wanted to tackle was doing the ceiling mounted system. So we researched that and quite a bit of money, but it's great, as you know, spending other people's money. And they had no qualms about that when I explained why I wanted to go that way. And so I got the Manfrotto Skyrail system and had a, a, a friend of mine who's a great construction installer. And I even weighed all the gear that I knew it was going to be on that system. It was going to be like 150 pounds worth of stuff between the lights, the cameras, the, the light, fill lights, the key light, the hair lights, and a couple of little lights, up lights going on the wall. So I had him find the studs in that ceiling and we did this rail system. And then I got the panographs. The panographs are those things that look like accordions so I can get program displays in front of them, mount cameras on little telescoping poles. And just, it was a bunch of research and trial and error on a couple of things. Oh, these poles don't go down far enough. Uh, this panograph doesn't handle the weight of this display. You got to get the more heavy duty one, but just hanging the stuff up there, positioning it where I want it. And it gives it a real clean look. All the wires are going through the ceiling. Like you said, all the HDMI cables, mm -hmm. all the audio uh, is, uh, I've, you know, from the studio background, recording studio background, I know that you can use Ethernet to get four channels of XLR. So I did the Ethernet boxes so I could send four mic channels to the engineer desk and four headphones back from the engineer desk to them. And everybody can have their own volume control. And the engineer is sitting there doing the camera switching, running the roadcaster, controlling everybody and not a cable to be seen because of the in-wall stuff. And the fact that I didn't have to run eight XLRs to the engineer desk, I only had to run four because the Ethernet carrying that signal. So that's some of the recording stuff that comes into play with doing a video studio. Mm -hmm. That's cool. The, that thing about the Ethernet, so I wasn't really, I wasn't aware of that. So how does that work? Is that a specific box then that um, that you plug the Ethernet into and it's it's sort of, is, is there any sort of additional engineering I'm, I'm getting out, I suppose? Or is that a sort of thing that you, a product you can buy that you just plug in the Ethernet and you've got the sockets right there for it? Yeah, that's quite simple. It's been around for a long time. A lot of um, theaters uh, and, and places that have concerts will do that because they want to send all the stage mixing to the right. console, which is in front of house, and they will use a couple Ethernet cables to do that. So the technology of running the audio on the Ethernet is pretty old, but because of these home-built studios, it's getting more affordable and companies coming out with more stuff just for this purpose. So this company uh, built a box and basically, you know, your Cat6 Ethernet has like six twisted pairs in it, meaning right. you have the, the left and right channel on twisted mm -hmm. pairs six, you know, four times. So mm -hmm. what it's doing, there's a little chipboard in there and there's the real actual four XLRs and then all that data travels to the ethernet. And on the other end is that same box, mm -hmm. which receives all that signals. And then you have our hard XLRs to go to your road, but it's, it's pretty old technology, but it's super handy in rooms like this where you want to keep it clean and not so have so much bulky cable traveling through the walls or floors. And then I got those panels at each desk. So clean, you know, yeah, yeah. I guess that just shows the value of coming to someone who's got decades of experience in music and stage production and stuff like that, that would, uh, you know, have all of this knowledge to bring to the table. But, you know, there's lots of us in the, uh, I would say, hobby live streamers or people who've just got into, uh, you know, this kind of stuff for, uh, you know, the sort of things that I'm doing that, um, yeah, there's, uh, there's still lots to learn. So <laughs> I appreciate uh, learning more about that from you. 
And mm-hmm. what is this? And there's um, the shortcuts. I was going to say sorry. there's shortcuts to that expensive sky rail system. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of work, but people could do that in their bedroom because they have the little mounts that you mount to your ceiling with the little spigot. And then you put a telescope and you can get your cameras and your lights hung on these. You don't have to have the rail system. The rail system's there so that you can move left and right, turn Got things you. around and make the room however you want. But if you wanted to do this in their bedroom, there's easy ways to do that. Get rid of the tripods on the floor and just because you're kind of your room is your permanent setup. You're not going to do a lot of moving around once you get your setup the way you want. It. So you can simplify that. And and I did that for somebody where I just said, we'll just do a couple mounts and your two camera angles will be here. Your key light will be on there. Nothing will be on the floor. So you can simplify all these things. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just while we're still on these pictures of this particular studio as well, the other thing that is just jaw-dropping about it is the lighting. And it's again coming back to this thing that it's not just the lighting in the background in shot, it's when you see the uh, the video that you've uh, posted in the Ecamm group and on your website, then you can actually see the, uh, the, you know, that you've got this lighting effect going throughout the room. So it's just a really nice space. But perhaps you could talk a little bit about the uh, the way that you set up the lighting and your thought process behind that and, uh, you know, the, the sort of decorative aspect of, of that as well. Right. I've uh, From the DJ world, uh, not the recording world, but DJ world, uh, I got into lighting because you have to, if you're doing a wedding, you need some up lights. If you're doing a concert, you need some moving lights. So I've always been interested in lighting and how lighting works with video. And of course, uh, you have to have flicker free, flicker free type of LED, so you got to study that and get the right lights for that. But one thing that made this interesting was the people that I found from Portland, Oregon, I believe, um, Psy Acoustics, I believe, PSY Acoustics, but you can look them up. But they designed these acoustic panels, and I wanted to integrate these into this studio build. I never used them before. I actually built my own panels for all the other studios I've done or bought cheaper versions. But this this company did a couple things unique. They would print on the fabric whatever you wanted. It could be the company logo. I wanted to go for this hexagon, polygon type look. So I got a high resolution graphic, sent it to him, and he prints it on this big canvas. And those are three and a half by six foot acoustic panels on that wall. The other thing that he offered was front lighting and back lighting on the panel. So he almost had like a, a LED tube bar like you do for fancy pictures in a museum. And you can mount those on the top and bottom vertical of the panel. And then he had LEDs going around the back, kind of like what you did in your studio. And I thought that was unique. And I said, well, when I find out their color scheme, if their logo was orange and green or red and purple, I could do that two color combo on there. And then I could accent the the 3D art panels, which you see on the center. Those are just uh, PVC uh, 3D art panels that I wanted to do a little like focus wall, little feature wall, and then up like that with those same color. And then the clouds, uh, I don't think you have a picture of the clouds in there, but the clouds I have hanging on the four soffits in the ceiling, they fit in there perfect. Mm-hmm. They're hung off chains and those backlit and front lit. So the whole room just off iPhone all runs off of a LED app. Um, and you go in there and you turn that on and you get that look. And if they wanted, their actual colors are, are actually green and orange for that client. But as I'm building it, you know, my favorite colors are the blue, purples, reds. Mm-hmm. So while I'm in there working, I'm putting it on the color I like. But, uh, on the Ecamm, you can see I, I posted a little bit of something they did and they had a red and green look or a red and orange look, but which is great. If you wanted to do a Christmas theme and you wanted red and green mm-hmm. or if it's Halloween, you want to do all orange. What's great is you can control your colors for your branding or for a specific event or theme. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's uh, the great thing about these lights. Like you say, you can change the whole look just by a tweak of <laughs> a tweak of an iPhone dial. Um, how long did it take to actually build all of that? Because I mean, there's just so much has gone into it. What was the sort of build time of the uh, the, the, the studio? The funny thing is, when they gave me the yes, I, you know, I gave them the big equipment list and the budget, and you know, we were right in that time frame where there were still shortages of stuff. But I literally got every piece of gear. In less than a week, it was like a miracle. They weren't even ready for that. I thought it was going to take longer, so I told mm-hmm. them, but I got 90% of the stuff from b and some of the stuff from Amazon. But when I made the order, everything came in less than a week. And, and I was like, whoa, we didn't even get my electricity installed yet because I wanted electricity in the ceiling. I wanted that mounting of the rail system. Yep. That whole build I thought was going to take, because I got the equipment so fast, I thought, oh, I can get this done in five or six weeks. It actually took about two, two and a half months to do and that was just because we're waiting on other labor things like the electricians and the people who run the hdmi and uh, the draperies because they wanted some custom drape and like you said not 
even though every room, every wall in that room is, is treated and every angle looks great, even the hallway that leads to that room <laughs> is decked out with an on-air sign and their logo and draperies right. and a little red carpet with the, the red poles and everything. So I actually had to do that after the fact. They wanted the hallway to be just as presentable as the room when you walked in. And, mm -hmm. and there's, there's drapes, so it's like when you walk in and we did a reveal for the client because that two and a half months that I was working in there, the client didn't come once. At least they said they didn't, but I believe it because we did a reveal for them. And we did the whole thing when they walked in and they saw it and they were like, almost crying. Actually, the young girl did cry. It's a mother and daughter who were doing like a podcast show. Right. And so that was great to see their reaction. That's that's 90% of the fun of it is is helping people and getting something, you know, more than what they expected. Yeah. Well, if anyone would have been blown away by that. It's just like I say, on another level. I, I also really loved the other one that you posted relatively recently, which was the kind of uh, uh, more cozy uh, set with two chairs, like an interview style thing. But I love the way that it mm -hmm. also incorporated incorporated the uh the stream deck pedal so that people could literally do this uh you know in person <laughs> interview style thing but switching it all from the pedal i thought that was genius perhaps you could tell us a bit about what that was uh, what that was for you know what the client's going to do with that and uh, some of your thought process behind that i don't have a picture of that one but it was another i thought i sent you a picture set. of that one yeah i have i haven't just got um, it up on my thing <laughs> uh, no worries it's uh it was part of the thing now that i want to do I'm thinking that there's three levels. There's multiple levels, but I want to categorize my consults and my bills into three levels. A level one being like what I have here, the talking head, maybe one camera, maybe a I got five or six cameras hooked up. That's because I test things in here. But somebody with a simple bedroom setup or somebody like you, you got the one camera. I want to do a level like that where some, some nice little aesthetics, some decent lighting, and one camera, two camera shot. That would be level one. Level two, which what you're talking about, is something I did for a, a popular judge in town, and she's into this community stuff. And she actually, the first show we did was she interviewed the mayor here in Las Vegas. So um, I wanted something like that you know, Ellen DeGeneres talk show vibe with the big, nice chairs, the the cozy looking at each other, a uh, two or three camera angle with a nice backdrop. And that would be the level two. And I think a lot of people want that for their podcast show, for an interview type talk show thing. And of course, the level three, which you showed a minute ago, which is the extravagant four or five cameras, five or six lights, uh, big desk, engineer desk, lighting, uh, crazy audio, uh, where you can move things around and flip things around. Like in that one extravagant build, I could flip all those cameras in the lighting. And there's a fireplace and there's these cozy little chairs where we could do a little fireside chat and then go back to the newsroom style on the other side of the room. So I wanted to do the three levels. And so I'm, I'm starting to demo those so people have a choice to make or something to look at. And it, it's fun for me to experiment. Oh, now I'm going to do lavalier mics because I don't want to have a mic, you know, mm -hmm. sitting where they're on their chair. So start testing out the DJI mics. And, oh, I wanted to do camera switching just in case I'm the host and put the stream deck pedal right under my foot. Nobody can see it and do the scene switching as I'm interviewing in the two chair interview type of scenario. So I'm glad you like that. And that's, that was the reason to get another product to showcase the, the three different levels of bills I want to offer. Yeah, yeah. And so when the, you're doing these things for people, have they got any previous experience of live streaming and they're getting you to come in and do the, the just the, the build side for them? Or are you sort of actually also teaching them, you know, how to use all the software and the, those kind of things as well and setting everything up for them as well? That's That's the hard part. Say, for example, on that last big build, all that stuff. Oh, I got to turn the lights on here. You got to turn the cameras on here. There's no way they are going to know all that. So, but then I have to find people who are capable of doing that. Uh, videographers, people who are familiar with Ecamm. I actually trained people on Ecamm. So I found a guy for that particular project who goes in there on a weekly basis and records all that footage in Ecamm. So the thing about Ecamm is it's like live to tape. We're also recording in camera with the cards in case he wants a little bit more robust thing to edit later but um hiring somebody to do that run all that stuff for that client is something there yeah there's the picture of the interview thing um so yeah and and for some people they kind of tinkered in video and they just need a little help with the design of the room or the right equipment and they know how to run it and i train them on that but like even the guy who was a great editor or videographer i had to train him on ecam he came over here and then when that studio was done i trained him over there and that's what I'm going to have to do in most cases is the simplified thing. Maybe they can learn. And if I see they're comfortable and they can do it, I'll let them alone and they're on their own. 
or the bigger extravagant stuff, I'll find somebody that they can rely on to come in and record and produce and camera switch and audio record and everything that goes on with doing a live stream or pre-recorded uh, content. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I've just put the uh, the picture up of that uh, little cozy set. I thought that looked really nice. Once again, just, you know, really great interior design, you know, design aesthetic to it and the lighting's all... Uh, uh, on point as well and yeah the idea of just being able to sit there and switch with the the pedal it's got my head uh, thinking as well about trying to switch up i do plan to escape from this single <laughs> single shot that i use on my live streams uh, at some point and you know having different angles in the same room so you're sort of optimizing it but i'm definitely watching what you're doing with uh, with interest to get some <laughs> get some ideas myself and Thanks. what uh, i was what watching other... you i was watching you when you first started and you fooled me that old scene you had with the couch and the purple and red in the background, all that time I thought that was real. And then one day you came on, so oh, that's just a, a green screen. And that was great. Yeah, I mean, that's down to Ecamm's green screen abilities as well. I mean, that's it's so much better than we're used to in applications like Zoom and Teams where people, you know, have got these mm -hmm. abilities to put fake backgrounds in. But it never really looks good. The, uh, you know, the... Uh, the keying is not uh, not so hot on those, but yeah, Ecamm does a great job at, uh, at that. If you've got a nicely lit green screen, <laughs> uh, what else have you got in the pipeline in terms of other builds? Are you working on anything else at the moment, or uh, you know what have you got going on in your in your test studio as well? Are you trying any new things out there? That's fun. I wish I could come in here more often and test things, but when things arise and somebody says, "Oh, I need this," I love to like grab some new gear and test it out. And I love sharing it with the, like the Ecamm community. It's probably one of the best. I'm in a lot of communities for tech stuff, whether it's just cameras or just recording stuff or just DJ equipment and stuff like that. But some of the other communities, you can say, oh, I just got a uh, Model X. And then soon somebody's in the comments on, oh, you should have got the Model X. <laughs> uh, that thing is whack. And da, da, da. But the Ecamm community, they're, they're friendly. They want to learn. They want to help. And Every time I post something, I always make sure I go back and answer the questions because that's the mm -hmm. whole point of, of yeah. helping people and having a community, not just showing off stuff or saying, look what I got. But, hey, guess what? If you're going to get this, do this because that don't work. Or there's a trick to get this to work. Or you're going to have to bypass this daisy chain this and do this. And I love answering the questions and helping people out. But but, but to your question, yeah, one of the, the next projects will probably be um, doing the recording studio Um branch off of that uh, video studio and then there's another um person who's going to be doing the opposite they have a recording studio and they're in arizona and they want to do video podcasts while they're rehearsing their studio or actually playing live and, and streaming right. it so they want to have their mixer which is already set up to do all the audio they want to get the cameras in there and go live in their recording studio while they're playing so stuff like that is good because then i can test the audio stuff and the video stuff but I love coming in my test kitchen and testing the gear. And like on that picture there, you have you have my my recording studio, which is right behind this wall. And I have that tied in with video and audio too. So those things are great practice for other clients that might want, oh, I want a recording studio that I can also live stream from. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do any live streaming of like live live DJing uh, uh, on live streams at all? Is that something you've uh, you've done? That was another reason why I got into the video stuff and the live streaming because of when the pandemic, every DJ mm -hmm. uh, went on live stream. But me being a music producer, knowing about copyright rules, it, it was a, it was a dead end. Uh, most of them get away with it on Twitch. Twitch would never flag anybody during the live stream. But you get so much more people indefinitely when you have a, a recorded something, um, yep. you know, a, an event or a stream that you did good live, but it stays on there. So. People can watch it forever and you get thousands and millions of views or whatever. And so I never really wanted to go for it because my community is heavily Facebook. People have um, LinkedIn stuff. I wasn't really big on Twitch. I did get the account on Twitch because I was going to do that. But number one, I was competing with thousands of other DJs because they were all doing it. Right. And, and thirdly, I wanted something i didn't want to get flagged for copyright because you know we're playing commercial hit music so yeah i didn't get into that most people wanted me to but i didn't yeah that makes a lot of sense as soon as you've said that i thought oh yeah of course <laughs> copyright there is that issue <laughs> mm -hmm. um so at the moment those um the, the pictures i've got up on screen are your test uh, test studio and then also your recording studio so what what is the link that's going on between those and uh, you know feeding one thing from the other do, do you have anything going on like that or what's what's the process there yeah that, that same concept with the, with the ethernet with the xlr so 
if I'm running logic in there or I can have the engineer in there running ecam while I'm in here doing an interview. So you mm -hmm. can, you know, do the two guest interviews and run ecam there. Or like when I demoed, when I went on the ecam thing and did the uh, ecam fam jam, I had that logic running on that other computers demoing how that song was produced. Right. So that is tied in with video and audio. Uh -huh. um, and it's, it's set up mostly for practice and, and for other people, but I do have it set up for myself as well. I haven't used it a lot in that purpose yet. Uh -huh. uh, you mentioned the Ecamm Farm Jam because people who may not have actually seen your videos in the Ecamm group, I'm sure have heard that on uh, doc streams and on the Ecamm streams as well. So uh, what, what made you uh, sort of decide to create that? Well, that's a, that's a shout out to Anna and Fulgens last year when they were doing the challenges, the design challenges. And it was great because everybody was just getting Ecamm. Let's go and find out, oh, how we can make these text blocks into graphics and this and that. One of the week's design challenges was to do the, the colored opening screen with the, the pink or red or blue opacity setting. So you're kind of behind that film of color. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, now do a countdown scene and you got to have some music and everybody of course was getting the royalty free music to put on their little three minute countdown thing which was great uh, obviously you're not going to hear hit songs because nobody wanted to get flagged for copyright so they're downloading the royalty free music and i said well i got something different i can do let me one up everybody and produce this song for ecamm so when i do do the design challenge with it was, you know, different scenes had to come up, cool transitions, cool text, a straight out of Ecamm logo that Fulgens came up with kind of thing. And I said, okay, uh, I'm going to knock this out. But, you know, the design challenge, you had to do it that day or the day after because then they were on to the next challenge. So I produced that song and nobody knows this. You'll be the first to know this, that I didn't want to do that vocal. That's my voice doing, this is a jam for the Ecamm fan. That was me with a little trickery on the audio, but I wanted Doc to do that. I want yeah, to send right. the file to him and tell him those couple phrases because he's got that great heavy D chub rock yeah. style voice. But, you know, there was no way I was going to get him that audio file. Who knew his schedule was going to be? Get him to do it the way I needed. Send it back to me, put it in the track. When it was a quick design challenge, I would have loved to have him on there because his voice is better than mine. But I, I did some trickery and I did that. And when I posted it, uh, on and full just went crazy. A lot of the other people started messaging me and then they wanted the song. And then of course, Katie and Ken Glenn, Hey, can we use this song? And I go, uh, yeah, of course <laughs> it's perfect. It's, it's for you. And, you know, to this day, doc uses it for the, the Ecamm design, uh, channel that he has and people just went crazy for it. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, it is the theme song now to, <laughs> to, uh, to, mm -hmm. to Ecamm and when he does the Friday demos and stuff like that, it's kind of. Uh, you know, there's people who have got this idea about, uh, you know, intros, whether to have intros on uh, live streams and, you know, the countdowns and stuff like that. But it does set a sort of, it's a bit like having, I suppose, your favorite program coming on TV or something. There's that that, that mm -hmm. uh, signature to it when it's just starting. And so, yeah, it's uh, really, uh, really been popular and yeah, become the Ecamm theme. So <laughs> nice yeah. work on that. We're going to do a, we're going to do a take one tech one next. You ready? I'm ready. Anytime. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was, uh, yeah, super, super cool. But uh, yeah, I know what you mean about Doc's voice as well. Whenever he does the promos for, um, you know, any upcoming events and stuff like that, he's he's definitely got the uh, <laughs> the voice for it as well. Um, so uh, so in terms of your studio there then, what have you got in terms of the the sort of setup? What have you got in there at the moment? And is there anything that you're, you know, you're, you're trying out specifically at the moment in there? Gosh, um, I am just, tinkering with things all the time, lighting and, and the stream deck pedal was probably the last thing I wanted to try something where it's hidden and I could switch the scenes as an interviewer on a two chair talk show type thing. Hopefully that helped people or inspire people to try that. Um, I got the three right now. I got three ZVE tens left, right and center, um, a key light, a little fill light, a hair light. Um, but the room, funny enough, this room, when I had a band, we rehearse in here. This was five or six years ago. I had a little funk band and it was something I had up my butt that I wanted to do, even though I stopped being a musician after high school. But we we did this little band thing here. And so the room was already kind of acoustically treated. So I said, I'm going to put my little video room in here so I could test out stuff. And I started doing live streams. I started interviewing Las Vegas Entertainment. A lot of notable people that were here in Las Vegas I was doing this Facebook live stream every Friday. Um, one of the last people I did was 
Tony Basil, who had the number one hit song, Hey, Mickey, you're so fine, you're so fine, you're blowing my hit me. She was actually from Las Vegas, and we were friends from back in the days. I had her. I was doing the live stream show, so this had multiple purposes. It, it was treated perfectly for acoustics. I started doing some live streams with live guests and virtual guests. I started testing out equipment, Rodecaster Pro 2s, EVE 10s, lights, stream decks, uh, stream pedals, um, now getting into the lenses and, and better cameras, you know, for my own hobby enthusiast stuff. But that's where I'm at, you know. I could show you the different angles and how it's all connected if you want. Um, yeah, cool. If, you, if, if you've got another camera angle other than the ones I've put up, it'd be great to uh, to have a little look at those if I uh, just switch over to full screen. So you... Well, everybody has your, your main. You can pop in and do the zoom. Uh, you can do, well, here's the zoom. Here's the normal. Nice. So if you're in size, something you go, ladies and gentlemen, my first guest is mm -hmm. Alec Johnson. And then the left camera. Mm -hmm. I love and the backgrounds right that camera. you've got going on there as well. The the lighting and the texture That's, at the yeah. back looks cool. It it makes it more immersive and fun to have that yep. stuff like the the trinket shelf, you know. And, uh, yep. I've I got a top down camera. There's the studio camera now. That's live in the studio right now. Um, and then I have the top down, like when I was, like the other day, I was showing some DJI mic stuff mm -hmm. so I can do the top down. Um, I got little scenes where if I had my guest, I got picture in picture stuff like that, but mm -hmm. that's it. Nice, really nice, uh, really nice setup. Mm -hmm. And I always ask people, uh, what's their favorite bit of tech? And uh, I'm usually expecting something like a little gadget or, you know, stream deck or something, but... I was quite surprised that yours was the laptop and it makes perfect sense. Perhaps you could tell us a bit about that and what you've got and why that is your your current favorite bit of tech that you've got. Well, you're only as good as your tool and you can have great cameras and you can have the cam links and you can have the great lighting and the Rodecaster Pro, but where's that all going? It's all going into a processor, a computer that has to handle all that stuff. And so to me, without this, with even uh, a Mac mini or we're starting to see we're, we're putting these things to the limit. So mm -hmm. I got this last October, exactly a year ago, the, uh, the MacBook pro M one 16 inch max, and it's handling everything I throw at. Not only do I do live streams and the recordings and um, I can do final cut on here. I can do audio editing and logic on here, even though I got the studio in there. Sometimes when I do a quick video in here, I don't even run in the other room and edit it. I'll drop, do Final Cut here, spit it out, and post it right away. But like I said, you're only as good as 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 is processor that's handling all these inputs and stuff. You know, the cam links want a lot of energy. Uh, mm -hmm. The docks and hubs, the audio interfaces, the the 4K, all this processing is going on. And now you got eCam talking about doing ISO video. Wow, you're gonna need some serious power to do that. So anybody who's got like a 2019 and less, you know, that was last of the Intel. It's time to upgrade if you're going to endeavor, go into the endeavor of ISO video and all the multiple inputs. So it's got to be my favorite tool. It's, it's the most important tool in the room. Yeah, yeah, you're so right there. I mean, I've got the uh, the base model M1 Mac Mini, the, you know, the first one that came out, and I'm definitely noticing I'm pushing it almost to the limits now. <laughs> it's like... 78% processor usage right now just doing this. So, uh, yeah, definitely need to uh, consider uh, upgrading, I think, this to make sure that you've you've got that that capacity. But, yeah, like you say, with ISO video uh, there, it's whatever it's whatever processor it's taking to render this video right now, then every ISO video is going to be a multiple thereof. So I think there's a lot of people who uh, ask for these things without really appreciating <laughs> actually what they're asking their system to do. They asked for the multi-stream, you know, everybody was going to restream and all these other places. Now they want the multi-stream on the computer. That is taxing on the yeah. processor as well. So if you're going to do LinkedIn and Twitch and Facebook and YouTube, that's four times that processing is shooting out to those different, you know, platforms. So uh -huh. it's time to upgrade. Yeah, be, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> right. Yeah. And what about your um, the recording studio then? So what's your setup in there? Have you got any other... Um, you know, other equipment in there. What's the, uh, the, the Mac that you've got in there and other, other gear? Well, that's the other beast. And just like in, in, in my studio video studio, I have the, the beast of a laptop. Um, that's the beast of the desktop. That is the M one ultra 
which is two max chips. So it's two <laughs> times or four times faster than this laptop. But I got Final Cut in there and I do all my real recording stuff in there. And man, I love that thing. I'm, those are my two favorite tools, the laptop in here and that M1 Studio in there. Now we're in October and we're getting ready for the new year. I'm going to tell you, you know, the new stuff is coming out. There's going to be the M2 Extreme Pro or something like that. They're going to get these 14 and 16 inch laptops to have the M2 processor. So if people are thinking about buying right now, if you can wait a couple months, you're going to see the new processors coming out. They're actually going to start leaking. Well, not leak. The leak's already out, but October 22nd, I think Apple's going to start not doing a big keynote, but they're going to right. start doing all these release press releases about new MacBooks and new processors and new Mac 1 M1 you know, Mini being an M2 Mini and stuff like that, which is going to be yep. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely definitely that time of year, <laughs> if you, like you say, if you can hold off uh, to wait for those mm -hmm. sort of things. <laughs> um, and what about in the, the other studio? Do you have anything set up there for live streaming as well? Do you ever do any streaming from the uh, the studio or is it just, uh, just purely I for did, recording? I did at first before I got this studio up and running. Uh, I was doing some interview stuff and some people were interviewing me and I had the camera set up in there and that's uh, I still was doing the iPhone thing. And then you do, after that, you do the ZV-1. And after that, you do the ZV-E-10. So I did have the ZV-1 in there with like a ring light sitting at that desk. That was that basic setup. Yeah. And now right there for just that live shot, I just got uh, the light on and I got the the microphone and audio interface in there in the Mac Studio. And it's it's totally its own entity, but it's also tied into this room. But no super video gear in there except for that one ZV-1. I got a ZV-1 in that room. That's, that's what you're looking at right now. But like I say, starting with the iPhones, then the ZV-1, then the ZV-E10. And now I just ordered that FX30. I pre-ordered that. I'm starting to get more into the camera stuff because I'm starting to do, which we could talk about, I did some location stuff. So not only do people want me to do the studio builds or do the small rooms for them. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to go on location and do one and do camera things for conferences and, and live location stuff, which is a whole nother challenge, you know? Uh -huh. Well, t tell us a little bit about that then. So how, how does that work and what sort of setups have you done there? And, and what are the challenges that you've faced with doing those kind of things? Yeah, just like last week, last week, there was a big cannabis convention in town. So Vegas is the capital of conferences and conventions. And uh, someone reached out and they had a 10 by 10 booth with a bunch of other vendors all in this big ballroom conference center. And they wanted to interview people at their booth. So they would go farm out all the people that they want to interview. This, oh, this, this guy's got an innovative product. Oh, this guy's services are great. We want to interview him. So did a camera setup and we did two nice uh, LED panel lighting with diffusers on them. We lit up their little podium really nice. And we did the DJI mics, um, but if you watch my last post on the Ecan community where I got that Rode dummy mic, it's just a fake mic with a windscreen on it, but it's got a cold shoe mount, and you can obviously they made it for the Rode mic because it's a Rode product. But you can put any of those DJI mics, the DV mics, the Hollyland. All these companies are coming out with those wireless mics, and they just mm -hmm. have that little cold shoe clip. The clip is the same size as a cold shoe, so we put the DJI mics in there, so they could have branding. I had the little triangle flag with their logo that I printed. They loved that. They didn't know I was going to do that. We asked them beforehand, "Do you want us to do lavaliers on everybody? You know, that's harder when you're running and gunning. If you're going to other booths or sitting people down, stuffing it under their dress or the shirt." Or do you want to do the interview style? She said, no, we want to do an interview where we're talking and we give it to them. It's like it's a conference. It's live. We want it, We don't want it to be too predetermined or too set up. I said, great. So I ordered that road dummy mic and I ordered the, the flag that goes on the mic and I printed out their logo on there. When I brought it that morning, they just loved that whole concept. They thought that that was great. It was additional branding. Plus, plus it was practical because the DJI mic was in there. The, you know, the receiver was hooked up to the camera and we did 30 interviews and two to 15 each day. Then we edited it all. When I say we, I have a partner who helps me with the editing and we're going to be getting into more of that. That seems to be, you know, people want more of that because a lot of people can't show up at a conference. Now you got hybrid, do it live. Yes, people show up. They can't make it. They can watch it live from the comfort of their home or at work, wherever. So I think mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah, that is really cool. Uh, how, how about the uh, the streaming? So was that just all edited afterwards, after the fact, or was that a live streamed event as well? And uh, That particular did... one, we, 
Yeah, we gave them the option. We could live stream. They go, no, we want to. We want to send. We want to get all these interviews chopped up by themselves. We don't want like two hours of interviews. We want each one chopped up with with a little intro and the lower third with their. But I explained to him, you know, we could do all this live. I could drop that lower third as soon as you tell me what the guest name is and what company they're from. I build that lower third. It could fly in. So. Now that they understand, I even showed them a demo of that. They want to do that on their future ones. So it'll be sometimes live streaming, sometimes pre-recorded. That last one was all just pre-recorded, edited, and given back to the client for whatever uh-huh. platform they're going to put it on. Uh-huh. And is that what would the, the, those sort of things be where you've got like a booth and you're still running this through Ecamm? Or are you doing this some other way uh, you know, with, without Ecamm? I know there's you know, other things like YOLO Box that you can use to uh, just live stream direct from the device where you're just plugging all your cameras into that. What's the your sort of approach with, uh, with my that, approach? In, yeah, I already practice it in an, in another area where I I, did, I brought the roadcaster and I did the cameras and I did ecam and I made sure the venue gave me Ethernet because you right. know when you're in a conference on Wi-Fi everybody's on that so tested that signal out um, but I would definitely use ecam just for the fact that I can do. You know, they're, they're, they're going to vendors last minute and say, hey, you want to do this? Uh, where are you from? And you want to talk about your product? And I'd like to, you know, say, hey, let's build this lower third and put their name and their business in there. Okay, yeah. action. Or live stream everything and everything be streaming with all those last minute details put in, you know. So I think that's the best tool for it is Ecamm, that you can do stuff on the fly while you're live streaming. Yeah, for sure. It's as simple as editing a little uh, text box. I mean, one of the things that mm-hmm. when I... Was looking to start my uh, my channel was I looked at like the ATEMs and things like that, but uh, I'm glad I didn't go down that route because when you look at just how simple it is to drag and drop things in Ecamm, it's, there's nothing quite like it. I think. <laughs> got got to do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Ecamm's way to go. And so, what um, what else have you got on the sort of horizon and things that you're you're sort of working on in in general? And uh, uh, yeah, tell tell us a little bit more about what you've what what other plans for you know the next sort of twelve months? Where do you want to take things? Well, uh, I kind of explained to you earlier that the enthusiast part of me, the hobbyist part of me, the the tech knowledge and doing the build and also still doing the DJ and the, and the music production stuff and I'm going this way and that way and I'm that gray area of, you know, I watched Elysio and same thing happened to him. It was all word of mouth. I have not promoted this service to the public yet and I have a huge Facebook community um, and I haven't posted anything there that I did want to get those levels of products that I could offer done and which I did. But I think in the new year, I'm actually going to promote this because everything's been word of mouth uh, clients that I've previously had from recording studio stuff or clients that I do the, the agencies that book me. And now they're branching into, Oh, can we, can we get some video content or can you show up and do this stream or this pre-recorded segment? It's all been naturally happening just with word of mouth and in, in the previous clients I work for. So now if I'm going to go full fledged into this, um, I, I built a new YouTube channel just like last month. I, I haven't made it public yet to like post a bunch of stuff, but I want to promote this now. I have the product. I have the services. Um, I know how to market it, but actually sitting there and focusing and go full steam on getting the YouTube channel, getting all the products, displaying all the services. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. There's still some uh, builds that I'm doing and some projects coming up. And of course, there's a lot of music production stuff that I'm still doing. So I think when I do focus it and start actually marketing it and getting that demand, I need probably some people to help me with it, but it, it'll be fun. I love uh, doing the, the build. I love answering the questions. I love you know, giving them more than they expect and stuff like that. So the future is marketing this service and doing more builds, more variety of builds. And, and I think the technology is helping us a lot with that because the stuff we're doing now, five to 10 years ago, we couldn't do the titles and the overlays and the graphics and the multiple cameras all in one little software platform. So mm. we're blessed that the technology is helping us with these other career paths, making it easy for us to make other people look good. You know, that's mm-hmm. where I'm at. Yeah, well, I've left links to all of uh, Rob's stuff in the uh, show notes and in the description of the video as well. So you can definitely go and check that out. If you are listening on audio, this is definitely one way you're going to want to go and uh, come back and watch the video <laughs> to see some of these studio designs because they just 
uh, absolutely uh, amazing. And uh, obviously look no further if you need studio design expertise. <laughs> uh, but from that point of view, uh, have you got any sort of advice for people who are looking to design their own studio? And like, what's what's the sort of, um, I suppose, the sort of creative process? You know, when you walk into a blank room or somebody comes to you, what are some of the things that you think about um, and, you know, advice that you could give to other people who are just sort of getting started and designing their own studio? Well, the one thing is they 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 see us and they see what we're using and they want to emulate that right away. But you and I both know we all started from the the cheapest of lights, the cheapest uh, of phone cameras, the cheapest of audio interfaces. But go that route, budget wise. If you want to get into this, you don't need all the extravagant stuff. The stuff we're talking about, the stuff we've been showing, the, the Skyrail system and the 4K cameras. And you know, if you want to sit at home and talk about your service as a, a lawyer, or if you want to get in the kitchen and show your cooking channel that you're coming up with, get a decent $400 camera, a couple lights, and start from there. What you're going to end up doing is you're going to be growing. As you grow, your knowledge grows, your technical skills grow, you start learning about lenses instead of just a fixed camera, you know, like a ZV-1 where you can't put a lens on there and get depth of field or go on location and get a, a nicer shot. But we all started there. So um, start small, learn it and grow with it. You know, technology is great, but you know, you can also liquidate your things. You know, if, if you build a, a something and you have the ZV-1 and a cheap ring light, put an offer up, use some of that money that you get for the used item to, to buy your new thing. Don't just throw it in the closet. That's how I did everything I did. I started small. Oh, I'm, I'm outgrowing this. Oh, this lighting work for me. Oh, I need a lens. Oh, I need this. But I would tell people start with what your budget works with for you and, and and get the camera get the simple light start doing it start going record start going live and you're gonna you're gonna start getting more enthused you're gonna get more knowledge and it might take six months it might take six years but you're gonna get to a place where you know you're gonna look great and you're gonna sound great and people like us can help you whether it's just on a forum like the ecan community or physically coming in person and helping you with that stuff but you're not alone and when, when you go to these communities they'll all help you out and learn it and love it. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Uh, that thing about the Ecamm community, I mean, you mentioned it earlier on about the difference, but I, I just constantly have to mention this because it is such a, a welcoming and helpful place where everyone's just uh, genuinely helpful and genuinely uh, happy for everyone else when they see them sort of thriving as well. So it's just been a, a bit of a revelation for me, really. The Ecamm community has just been such a such a help to me all the way through that process as well. So really really sound advice there and uh where's the uh, the sort of best place for people to uh, get hold of you i mean i've got your uh, website that i can pull up here is this the uh, the sort of best place for people to go or where else would you rather sort of uh, direct people to get in touch and if they're interested in obviously your services as a uh, a set designer which they should be <laughs> then uh, what's mm -hmm. the best way to get in touch there that's one of the best ways because I, I talk about myself and the stuff I've done. And then there's a consulting tab on there where you can see about the studio bills and you can email me and inquire about that. And then the, my Facebook page uh, where we post a lot of stuff, the Ecamm community where we post a lot of stuff. Um, I, I have two YouTube channels, but like I said, I designed a new YouTube channel just for this video consulting thing because I didn't want to get it confused with the DJ and music production site that I already have. So on YouTube, just go to Right On Beat Productions. It'd be great. It'd be great to see this channel grow because like I just started it. And I know you got a lot of people and I know the Ecamm community is great. If you guys, you're going to see no content, maybe one or two things, but I'm building stuff to put on there. So subscribe to that channel and I'd love to see that camera, uh, I mean that the channel grow with our family, our community that that we always see every day here in Ecamm and all your contacts, all my contacts. I want to see that camera, I mean that channel grow. So um, yeah, that's right on Pete Productions on YouTube and DJ Rob, well Robert, DJ Rob Hathcock on Facebook. I know you have all the links, but it's easy to find people. I, I get tons of just the messenger messages. Sometimes people don't want to post a big, deep question when I, you know, post a video. They'll yep. hit me in messenger. Maybe they're embarrassed that it's a question that's too easy or it's just too in depth. And I get all these questions and I'll answer it on there. You can contact me on there. So you can find me if you need me. <laughs> cool stuff cool stuff well like, yeah like you say all the links are in the uh, show notes if you're listening on audio or in the description on youtube as well and i'll definitely link to that uh, new youtube channel and and all the places i can't wait to see the 
future builds. Uh, I always enjoy when I see a little notification that you've posted something in the Ecom group. I'm just always like, oh, what's it going to be this time? And go and check out the video. They're just always so, so amazing. But uh, thank you for having me. And, and I really do want to say that I do uh, need your assistance because you're the man of the plan. And what I lack is this organization and the structure and the planning that you do. And, and I know that's what you talk about a lot. And so that's where I need help. And I think you're the man to give it to me. <laughs> well, we can we can certainly chat. Let's have a, a chat afterwards and uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> yep. Thanks once again for being here. It's been a real pleasure. And just, as I say, love always seeing all of your stuff. And uh, we'll have a little chat backstage after. Cool, cool. stuff. Well, thank you very much for uh, for sticking around with us and watching. If you are listening on audio, you may definitely want to check out the video of this one in particular, just to see all of the uh, behind the scenes shots and all of the studio builds from uh, DJ Rob here. Uh, finally, if you'd like to connect with me, you can obviously check out the show notes and go to my website, takeonetech.io to find out about all of the things as well. I'll have another great guest for you next time, and it's sure to be another great conversation then too. So uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you next time.